So, ladies and gentlemen, my today's guest on Strefa Dread Show is Neil Perch, uh, leader of Zion Train. We are meeting because of a new release. Hi, Neil. How is your lockdown, sir? Hello, Macken. Um, it's very nice to see you and hear you. Uh, my lockdown is not so bad. Um, I have two small children. We have a garden. Um, and so, of course, we have no work, um, but we have nice conditions to enjoy family time. Um, I always think when I think it's hard for me, I always imagine the many, many, many thousands of people who it is harder for. People with no garden, with no family, uh, people with zero savings in the bank. Um, so I think even though this is a hard situation for everybody, uh, our version is reasonably comfortable. When do you think you will be able to perform again? Well, that's a very interesting question because um, different people in different countries are estimating different dates. And of course, Zion Train works internationally, so I watch these different estimates. Um, realistically, I think in the autumn, some countries will allow some concerts under certain conditions. So realistically, we can probably perform from autumn. Whether we want to or not is another question, because I, won't, I will not play a concert and risk anybody's health, mine or any audience or anybody. Um, it's not worth it, Zion Train much as it is my life, it is not worth somebody else's life. Um, so we will see the, the thing with this virus, as we all understand, is it's new. So predictions um, are not so easy to make. I hope by autumn we can play. I imagine that actually it may be 2021 before we play normally to a normal audience. Zion Train has been on its way for 32 years now. We are at another station. Why did you call your album like this? And what is this black and white design standing for? Okay, well, the, the album title is Illuminate. Part of this is the, the um, reintroduction of the real meaning of this word. Illuminate is, of course, to shed light, to bring light whether you bring light by information and knowledge or by actions. Um, so we, uh, as a, a group of people participating in making this album, cho chose the, the name Illuminate because uh, we like to think that in our, uh, in our work on an album, we bring our stories, our personal stories. My story as album producer, the singer's stories, the, the musician's stories, and we like to think um, our stories illuminate, uh, not more than someone else's stories, stories in general illuminate. The truth illuminates. And um, this album is our truth. Of course, like with all Zion Train um, work, the concepts, both lyrical and musical, are not random. And they're not about having a hit or uh, being popular. They are about thought-provoking. So this is also why we use the word illuminate. The concepts we have in the constellations of musicians and artists we use, the rhythms and styles of songs, these are all ideas and they are meant to bring light to the listener um, and hence illuminate. Um, the symbols on the, on the album artwork, um, first of all, they were put together by uh, Marko Vojnic uh, in Pula, Croatia. Um, so thank you to Marko for his beautiful artwork. Um, first, the, you have the, the rays of the rising sun. This is also an illumination. The I sun know, the house of the rising day. sun. Yeah, there's also the house of the rising sun. But that's different because that's a brothel now. So, <laughs> um, the, 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 the rising sun is a very powerful image and it's been used through many centuries by many different elements of humanity. Um, 
The spiral, the Neolithic spiral you see in the center of the design is the oldest global sign ever recorded by humanity. Um, this sign repeats across Neolithic ancient communities um, from uh, Southern Europe to Northern Europe, anywhere the Celtic people went, anywhere the South Europeans went. And it's one of the um, oldest um, forms of artwork that we see repeated across the planet. And um, there are many theories about what this sign means. Um, uh, but what's very, very clear is that it meant something very important for human beings. Uh, the best interpretations are that it's an indication of the continuity of life. These spirals show the continuity of life and therefore the spiritual connection between um, our existence, day-to-day -day existence, and, and life as a, as a bigger concept. Um, so we chose these images mainly because of those reasons, also because they're very beautiful images and they are very strong in black and white. Um, of course, uh, there are many, many stereotyped images that are used in black music, in reggae music, in dub music. And actually, sadly, I find most of the stereotyped images are quite cheap. So the Star of David, the Ethiopian flag, a speaker box, they're quite cheap and they, they don't really mean very much. Um, and uh, so what we've tried to do is use images that provoke thought that are ancient and have been used a lot and that allow people to maybe go and research for themselves what these images mean and where they come from because there are some fantastic stories be behind these images. It's better for people to discover these things for themselves. It all feels like a lot of puzzles to put together. A few studios, nine singers, some players. Was it hard to conduct? When and how long you made it all? Um, this album, from the first steps of this album to finishing the album, was seven years approximately. Of course, some periods of time were more intense than, than others. Um, the musicians and the singers all of whom on the album are all top professionals. Paolo Baldini, Paul Lush, Don Fay, Johnny Donito. These guys are super professional musicians. Then people like uh, Cara, uh, Lua, Prince Jamo, Michaela Grena. They're fantastic singers. Um, so the, in terms of performing the work, it was relatively straightforward. Um, some of the things were quite difficult. For example, I wrote the songs. So if we take uh, Politrix, the song Prince Jamo sings for us. Um, first, I wrote a rhythm, and then I sent the rhythm to Italy, to Paolo Baldini's studio, where then he played the bass and the guitar, and his colleague played the drums, uh, copying what I played on synthesizers. Then he sent it to me back, and. I sang the song very, very badly, but sent this privately to Prince Jamo, and he sang it very beautifully. He has a beautiful voice. I have a terrible singing voice. Mm. Um, so these things take a lot of time, uh, but actually when you're working with professionals like, like these people, the execution is actually quite quick. Uh, from, For example, I send the rhythm to Baldini for this song one day, Three days later, I have it back, uh, played better than I played it. Um, I send the song to Prince Jamo uh, with my voice. Three days later, I have it back with his voice, of course, much better than my voice. What takes long to develop is the, um, the, the concept of the entire album. So Zion Train doesn't make an album because it's time to make one or because we want to sell some records or because we want to do a tour. We make an album because we've reached a point in our story, my story mainly, uh, where we feel we have new messages or we feel it's time to refresh our messages. So the concept to bring those messages into music, that is the hard work. So the, the concept along with the title, 
the pitchers, the sort of people involved. The whole concept is um, coming from Land of the Blind, the last studio album. We live in this dark world ruled and often populated by people who are only thinking of themselves and are killing the planet and therefore killing everyone else. We need to shine light into our existence by understanding who we are, what we are, and why we are here. So to turn that concept into a set of songs, that is the difficult part. Um, but if you read, for example, between Michaela Grainer's song, which is in Italian language, but the, the meanings of this, through the meanings of Prince Jamo's song, through the meaning of Kara's song, We Shall Rise, one of her songs, um, you get you start to get the message drawing those lines before recording that is the hard bit um, but it is the most important bit it's also the reason why we're working with some uh, new organizations uh, in the in the promotion uh, and distribution of this album the organization stop ecocide um, is a very important organization that worldwide is trying to make the um, the act of ecocide, so killing living things, animals or plants, is trying to make it a crime. It should be a crime. It should have always been a crime. For us, it's very, very important. This is part of the illumination. Extinction Rebellion, who we're also working with, um, the, they are also making a very, very important bit of illumination in our society. They are saying... Um, we are in a climate emergency. To quote Greta Thunberg, as we did in, in the Fate Shifter song, um, our house is on fire and we need to behave like our house is on fire. Um, this, it's all part of the narrative. So establishing the narrative is the hard part. Making the music with such talented musicians and singers is actually relatively easy once you establish the narrative. Despite, as always, strong and conscious lyrics, there are some more mellow or calm musical parts in here, like Watch Where, for instance. In general, I have a feeling it's quite diverse album, leading to some places where your fans, uh, mostly the people who know you from explosive live performances, could be quite surprised. There are more guitar solos in songs like Don't Forget, Instrumental Passengers, or uh, free kind of oriental vibes and journey. Is it also going to change your live performances, the mood of them? Uh, is it going to be somehow reflected in uh, uh, on stage as well? It, the project Illuminate will be reflected on stage. Um, Firstly, in that um, Cara, who sings three songs on the album, uh, will be the main vocalist for Zion Train moving forward for the near future. We're also doing some shows with Michaela Grainer. Um, and that is a, a physical manifestation of the album. Um, some of the songs will be performed, some of the songs from Illuminate will be performed live. So in that way, the live set will, will change. However, the live set won't become more mellow than before because something Zion Train has always um, focused on for 32 years really is that music, recorded music for consumption at home or in your car or in your headphones while you walk, that is a different sort of music to music to be consumed with a loud sound system and lots of people and an excited atmosphere. Um, so, as, as you well know, our albums have always sounded different to our live performances, whether Mollera was singing, whether Dub Dada was singing, or whether Cara was singing. The, the live show never really reflects the albums, maybe one song, two songs, and that's because of um, our relationship with music. Um, when we make music for an album, it's to fulfill one listening experience when we perform music live it's to fulfill a totally different listening experience the sort of experience where you jump up and down you're excited with your friends 
maybe you smoke, maybe you drink, you sweat, you know, um, it's very different to maybe sitting at home with your headphones and listening to an album from beginning to end. Um, so that it will be reflected, but only in the same way as previous albums were reflected in our live show. You mentioned Kara will be a part of your regular live performances. Uh, a person who is recognized uh, with Zion Train in last years, obviously, is Dab Dada. He is also missing on this album. How would you comment it? How, sorry, what's the, the uh, what's the question? How would I comment uh, uh, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Dub Dada has um, been with Zion Train since really pretty permanently since 2001 and he is a fantastic MC and I was always very proud to work alongside him. Um, we have reached a stage, not Zion Train, but humanity has reached a stage where if we are going to speak in public, we need to speak about important things and speak about them in serious ways. We are no longer in a time where humanity can sit back and party and play. We act or we die. This is where we are at as humanity. Um, so Zion Train right now as, needs as a voice, somebody who is politically aware, who is uh, politically um, um, uh, uh, vocal, who, who can talk through politics, and who is actively involved in political campaigns, such as Stop Ecoside and Extinction Rebellion. Cara is um, a, a, a woman from the UK who, in the UK and in the alternative UK scene, she's very well known. She does not come from the world of reggae, which is very important to me, um, because the world of reggae is full of cliches and platitudes Zion Train do not believe in Haile Selassie. Zion Train do not believe in Ja and never did. And with respect to the people who do, um, I, I don't want to play with their faith. What I want to do is talk about our faith. Our faith is humanity, the existence of humanity in symbiosis with the planet, living in a sustainable and a uh, continuable way moving forward. And as Zion Train, I feel it is our obligation to make this clear to people. I don't want to perform to sell records or just to make people excited. I want to perform to give people a message. So Kara has this message already without me telling her it. She and I, she and I we share a message and we share politics. Dub Dada, for all his fantastic talent as an MC, his message is much more about um, Rastafari and sound systems. I like sound systems, but they are really are not important. What's important is don't kill the trees, don't pollute the air, uh, don't burn any more coal, stop warming the planet up. They are the important things. So in conversation with Dub Dada over some time um, during the last years, we realized that the path of Dub Dada and the path of Zion Train are naturally heading in different directions. And so we decided to make this uh, break and pause. As for recording uh, from Dub Dada for Zion Train, you will actually notice the last Zion Train vocal that Dub Dada recorded um, was the song called Roots Man Play for Land of the Blind um, and also released on the, 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 the Money EP, the Money 10 inch uh, featuring um, uh, Daman from France, featuring Dub Dada um, and featuring Fitter Worry. Um, that was recorded in 2012. So between 2012, which is actually when I started working on Illuminate and the finishing of Illuminate, I asked Dub Dada to record for me probably at least once a week, every week for 
eight years. For whatever reason, um, it, it didn't happen. Um, I, I can't I can't answer for Dub Dada. I wanted him to be on the album. I asked him and asked him and asked him. Um, I offered to write songs with him, to for him to write songs by himself, for him to come to my studio and record, for him to record in his own studio. For whatever reasons he chose, this didn't happen. Um, maybe this was just part of our natural evolution into new things. I hope that Dub Dada will record, either for himself as Dub Dada or for other people. Um, I have no idea. Some of those questions he has to answer, I cannot answer. Um, but um, as, as you're aware, you have a, a long history listening to Zion Train and knowing Zion Train. Part of our mission is to move forward, um, both musically and conceptually. And uh, that requires the participants to um, act. You know, no one is, I'm not anybody's boss. I'm, uh, I'm the producer and director of the Zion Train project and the participants act by themselves. So they can say yes or no to anything. They can suggest things to me. If they don't, they are no longer participants. This is how a, a collective functions, no? Um, so I think it was the right time for Zion Train and Dub Dada to musically go in separate directions. Um, I think Kara is perfect with a capital P for the future of Zion Train. I hope that Dub Dada is just making a career change and not a career stop because he's a very talented MC and musician who deserves to be heard. The one other small aspect is um, Zion Train, we represent energy. Yeah, we're, our music represents energy, my energy, universal energy. And to be honest, I don't think it's so cool always being four men on stage representing energy that's a very specific and particular energy and of course it's not it's not my fault it's not dub dada's fault but four men is very different to three men and a woman or in fact i i have this year been using a brass section that is also all women so sometimes now zion train is is one man and three women i like this you and i and many of our colleagues we're men in the music business and we, also, we always say, oh, women, they don't get a chance. They're, they should have a chance. They're talented. But very few of us give them the chance. I'm 51 years old. I've been 32 years in music. If I cannot give women the chance to be in a professional situation in music, then who will? If we don't do it, we're just talking platitudes. Uh, actions speak louder than words so that doesn't really have anything to do with Dub Dada but it's very empowering to include women once more as part of Zion Train. We all know Molara was a very strong component of Zion Train in the past because she was talented, because she is talented but also very importantly because she has female energy. It's different to me, it's different to you. We all know this. Fate shifter with Kara, with the words like system shut down, sounds like a prophecy. It could be a hit for today. Do you consider it somehow as a prophecy? Um, not really a prophecy. Um, it's very appropriate for today's climate. You know, if you want a prophecy about the planet, look to the book written in 1973, by the environmentalist Rachel Carson. It's called The Silent Spring. And she predicted in 1973 what we have now. A warming planet, billions of people being made homeless, other people so wrapped up in greed that they will allow people to die just to make them more money. The plants dying, the animals dying, the world becoming a desert. That's a prophecy. <laughs> in 1973 what we do as in, in this case Zion Train featuring Kara is we illuminate uh, these facts to people 
I don't want to sing uh, or have a singer on my music singing, Jah will break every chain again. It's bullshit. And people have said it since the 1950s. No, he fucking won't. Yeah. Time to, time to wake up. But we will kill ourselves if we don't change our action. The, I want reality. So it sounds like a prophecy, maybe. Um, I think it's just a good slice of reality. You know, um, excuse my language, but I think you probably agree. Most people live with their heads up their own ass. Yeah. So what we're saying is pull your head out of your ass and look. Take a walk in the countryside and see there are no insects left. No insects. That means soon there will be no animals. We are animals. We're not different. We're animals. So when those things die, we die. There's no magic solution. Um, so that's that's what that song is specifically about, about the global warming and, and the effects of it. So it's, it's nice that it's um, appropriate for now, for the zeitgeist, if you like. Um, but I don't necessarily see it as... A prophecy, I see it more as clarity. There is one name which appears in production credits and and locations quite often on this album. It's Alte Ziegelei, Old Brickyard. Is it your new studio in Germany? That is my new studio in Germany, yes. yeah. The place uh, where my studio is now located is in the countryside it's a, it's um it's in a spot with no neighbors no people pass by and um until approximately 1910 it was the site of a tigalai so a brick factory here they extracted the the clay from the ground to make the bricks and there was a large oven a kiln to make hundreds of bricks a day and in the villages around um, the Alta Tigalai, you still see lots of houses that are built with the bricks that were made at the Alta Tigalai. You mentioned Paolo Baldini. Uh, he appears on this album with his work and you also started to perform together. Is another project going to be your common work like he just did with Dan Imperial? Uh, yeah, it's... You know, um, Paolo is a fantastic musician and he's a, he's a great guy. Um, he's involved in many, many projects and um, lots of them are much bigger than Zion Train um, in the Italian scene. Um, uh, Paolo asks me every time I see him if we can do more work together. And every time he asks me, I'm, I'm honored. Um, I'm not sure what it will turn into. Yes, we will do more live shows together um, occasionally. Uh, again, because I like to change the live show. It keeps energy in. So Paolo will play live bass on some shows, either where um, he really wants to or where a promoter really wants it or where we decide it's appropriate. He will play some live bass for me on some future Zion Train productions. Um, as to a new project, uh, I, I don't know um, really. I've, I'm always honored to make music with him. Um, and beyond, beyond that, I, I don't really know. He always has good musical ideas. A, a small story, when I first saw Paolo ever playing music, it was maybe 25 years ago, maybe 22. And he was playing with uh, the band, the, P, the BR Stylers, which also included Michaela Grena on vocal. And they were doing a cover version of Zion Train's Building Rome. And they were just a band on stage in an Italian festival. I didn't know them then. And the, the cover version was very, very good, actually. And um, so it's very interesting to watch Paolo's career as this, um, you know, uh, not so known Italian bass player to now being one of the best known reggae producers, actually, in, in the new world of reggae. That's great, and I'm always honored to work with him. 
I hope we do more in the future. New projects, nothing specific is planned. Mm -hmm. There is also a Polish accent on the album. Please tell us about it. We have our very good friends, also I believe your very good friend, um, Mariusz and Schmuck, his, uh, his partner, who, who I know less well, who run and have run for many years now the best reggae studio in Poland, as far as I'm aware, and that is Studio As One in Warsaw. Um, uh, the guys have done mastering work for Zion Train for several years now, and of course they were the first people I thought of when it came to mastering uh, this album. So they're the when all the tracks were finished at the Alta Tegel Eye, when I had mixed them, then they were sent as pre-masters to Warsaw, and uh, the guys worked on them, polished them, and mastered them, so they're fully responsible for um, uh, for a, a strong element of the sound. I'm always grateful for their uh, high quality and cost-effective work. That's always very good. Um, I, I also like, as, as a general thing, I like people to realize um, the international base of Zion Train, the reggae world, the music world, the bass music world is very Anglo-centric. And you also notice for the first time ever, there is a song not in English on this yes, album. It's Italian. Italian. It's got some very, the words are very beautiful. Um, uh, when when translated into one's own language. Um, I don't like the Anglo-centric global perspective. The, the Anglo-centric global perspective is part of why the USA and the UK have the biggest global death rates from COVID-19. The Anglo-centric perspective is a very arrogant worldview that many, many, many people in the music business have groups, agents, record label, and it is it includes a sort of um, an arrogance that thinks that things that come from an English language base are better. Of course, they aren't better. They're just different. And I want all of the people who know Zion Train and listen to Zion Train in all of the countries that aren't the UK and aren't the USA um, to know that we value their culture. And so we have a Croatian graphic designer, we have a Polish mastering studio, we have Italian musicians, we have, you know, also all sorts of musicians, but we have a song in Italian. Uh, we reach into global culture and we try and re-disseminate some global culture. Um, our culture, Zion Trends culture, is not reggae culture. Zion Trends culture is not English culture. Um, if Zion Train has a, a, a culture like this, it's more of the uh, global free spirit, free festival, non-musically aligned, non-religiously aligned, free folk. Um, that's our culture and we want to remind people that's the culture we live in so we don't mention ja we don't have ethiopian or jamaican flags on the album uh, we don't have coptic so ethiopian church designs um, we don't necessarily use patwa jamaican english each of our singers sings in their natural voice so some of them are like Brother Culture is naturally a Patwa MC. Um, Rada Shafiq is naturally an English guy uh, who happens to have Caribbean roots. Um, we're about moving forward. We're not about reaching back to old stereotypes to, because we're not confident in ourselves. We are confident in ourselves. We are confident in our message and our message um, is part of the new global message that we have to survive as with humility and respect for the planet and all living things around us. Money 
cannot be more important than life, whether it's the life of a bird or a human being or a fish, money cannot be more important than that. Society cannot be based around economics. Society has to be based around well-being and sustainability. So they're, they're the voices. Everything in the whole concept of the album from the title, the inclusion of different languages, lots of different artists, um, the inclusions of different musical styles, the inclusions of globally recognized signs in the graphic design, they all um, lead to one message which is actually probably best illustrated in the song Unity with Prince David singing. Um, uh, Prince David is uh, normally at home with the Moan Bessa crew from Venice, Italy, and they make heavy roots reggae music in the style of Abishanti. So very um, Rasta based music. Um, I have very little interest in Rasta based music. However, Prince David has a very beautiful voice. He's a fantastic singer. The song he sings on our album is about universal consciousness. That means that um, on, on certain levels, it means that I, Neil Perch, and you, Macken, we know that people sitting in Uganda or Australia or Argentina or Canada share the same positive thoughts about the world as we do. And they don't have to do with Ja or the Catholic Church or the power of the dollar or any of these bullshit things that are created to control us. They have to do with the fact that you're a human being, I'm a human being, those other peoples are human beings, and our main reason for being here is to survive happily. That's it. There is nothing else in life. And that's, that's, that's part of the, the universal uh, consciousness unity message that, that we try and put through. Neil, my last question. As one of the pioneers of digital dub, how do you observe growing number of the new artists in this scene? And who would you recommend? Well, as often, there, there's a good part and a bad part to my answer. Um, so it's nice that um, I and my colleagues are seen as part of the founders of this movement. Um, However, I don't really want to be part of this movement. Um, I'll tell you why first, before I say what I think is positive about the movement. We've now got to a situation where um, the situationists in, in the early last century in Paris, they would say that the dub movement has become part of the spectacle. It's no longer a protest movement. It's very rarely a DIY self-determination movement. It's a movement where you need 30,000 euros to buy a sound system, and that's it, you're in the movement then. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. There's no culture or very little culture left in this movement. The events have become global capitalist um, carnivals. Rotterdam, with the greatest respect to the beautiful people of Rotterdam who made it happen, is a global festival of selling things and hundreds of thousands of people fly on unnecessary journeys from all around the world to spend money on red, gold and green Coca-Cola and crap t-shirts. Um, this is where the modern reggae and digital dub movement has got to. You have um, a dub corner. Again, respect to Sevi and those people who worked hard to make it happen. But do they really have to have 10 sound systems, each driving 4,000 kilometers in a truck, each making all of that pollution just to show how much money they each spent on amplifiers? The system is, the, the, the scene is bec become infected with the sicknesses of our system. And um, I'm sorry, but I don't like that. I don't like that the guy who builds his own system and uses a second-hand amplifier and does his best with little money, I don't like that he or she isn't recognized. But the guy whose parents were rich, who can go and, you know, buy, buy a, buy a 20,000 euro amplifier, he's recognized because he's loud enough. That's bullshit. 
And, so, and I personally, I want no part of that. On the positive side, anything that allows lots of people to express themselves in art, music being art, and uh, gives them a possibility to um, display that art, to play their music, that's positive because art should be democratic. Everyone should have a part in, in art and the expression of it. And the explosion of digital dub is, is allowing a lot of that um, to happen. In terms of who I would recommend, um, I'm left very short for answers because even though there are lots of people making well-produced music, I hear no new ideas. If you want old, if you want those ideas, like if you want this, this, the idea of steppers, go and listen to Dread and Fred from from 1988. Don't listen to something recorded now that copies them but is 10 BPM faster. I'm sorry, but ideas are original. So if you want roots reggae, don't listen to Alba Rosie. Listen to Lee Perry, Black Ark, for crying out loud, if you want the real energy of the thing, listen to the real thing. Don't listen to some cheap imitation watered down through years of capitalist exploitation. That's not what, it's not what the scene is about. It's not what dub is about. It's not what reggae music should be about. And it's certainly not what politically motivated protest music was ever about. So my recommendation for people who want digital dub is go and see your local sound system. Don't go to some big event with the same people playing who play everything. If you're in Warsaw, go to go and see Jalov. Go and see your local people. If you're in Gdansk, go to the the, the party's moonshine play and go and, and listen to Radical Guru and his colleagues. Don't listen. Don't believe the hype. Because all it is is money at the end of the day. You know, if it means you don't listen to Zion or you don't come and see Zion Train ever again, okay, everyone's seen Zion Train, even though we make new music. The, the point is, the, the energy is in the new ideas and the people who do these things for love, not the people who do these things because they want to be trendy or they want to be recognised. You know, if you want to pour fire on something, Pour fire on that because it's just they're fooled. They're inside Babylon. If you spend 30,000 euros on an amp, 20,000 euros on, on speakers, then you go around doing favours to everyone to get in an event and you think that makes you something or someone special. You're deluded. You are a tool of capitalism. You are a slave to capitalism. If, if you think you're any different, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Look for the people in, in music and in, in, in anything that is energetic. Look for the people who made a difference. Shaka made a difference in his day in the 1980s. John Coltrane made a difference. Sun Ra made a difference. They changed people's lives. They didn't just give, you know, some kids loud music one evening playing like stereotypical formulaic music they put new ideas into people's lives and changed people's lives by their by their demonstration go there it's not for me to say who does that for you but follow that energy the thing that makes you go wow there's something new there's an inspiration follow that and after that you know i don't care what it's called the people listening should care what it's called um I haven't heard any new reggae or dub music that I found exciting for 10 years. I've heard lots that I find professional, well recorded, well played, you know, full respect to the musicians, producers and everything. But exciting? No, zero. So what was the last exciting musical thing in general you discovered? The last exciting musical thing I discovered, um, you know, it, 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 uh, 
it's funny it's actually reflected in the in the tune journey to a collective illusion on the album journey on the album um and it was inspired by Dinito Johnny the alto saxophone player on this track and some of the music he makes as a solo musician he works with his saxophone and a harmonizer and other electronics and i heard him switching between um european scales and arabic scales and that was really exciting because for me um it represented a, a, like a lesson in culture so maybe the same way as jimmy Hed hendrix at woodstock playing the star spangled banner represents a lesson in american foreign policy um this represented for me a lesson in modern global politics uh our cultures are so intertwined and magically intertwined that really it only takes some focus to switch between the beauty of european culture to the beauty of arabic culture islamic culture actually for most of our lifetimes we've been taught that arabic culture is the enemy um and this was a really nice point in music to turn over the whole of that preconceived thought see for me those things are exciting things that go into my head and change my narrative a, a bit so then i see the world a bit differently after hearing that music so um gianni uh, denito in in that case um and it's all about the provoking of thought so it doesn't have to be a famous artist or a popular artist um you know for example your colleagues the warsaw village band if somebody sees those people playing at an international festival like womad so not in poland someone who has no polish connection in their own culture immediately if if you have a mind you start thinking about old polish culture where do these sounds come from where do these songs come from it's thought provoking it's culture adapting it's um it allows us to strengthen the bond of humanity in places where maybe we didn't think we had bonds um and that's what i th i think is exciting in music um i don't think music business or the sound system world is very exciting at all at the moment um if if it, if you maybe i'm maybe i'm talking too much about the theory um in terms of the actual people performing in my sort of um world musical world now um and what i felt was a breath of fresh air uh, rather than exciting but a breath of fresh air is sinai sound system from sheffield in the uk because there you have a a a, a, hum, a, a humble guy uh, the guy who runs the sound system Hugh, who isn't making himself big as a personality at all as far as i can say he's not shouting about himself on the microphone um but he's providing the highest quality sound system um in those self bits built sound system world that i've heard for a long time and he's doing it because he understands the technology that's quite exciting because it's much more real than say some of the people who are hyped or some of the people who spent more money than him or some of the people who hype themselves a lot um and he's not shouting about this religion or that religion he's just playing good music none of it produced by himself but that is um refreshing rather than exciting because it's how it should be um you know someone who is passionate about the technology and the music but who puts their self their personality their ego to the back and just presents the music at high fidelity high volume that's refreshing if you want something in the sound system world but then you'd have to travel to sheffield to see him if you want him to be local to you so, uh, the world is changing macken um i wonder i i really wonder whether i can justify a trip for example to mexico to play music 
for 500 people five times in you know five concerts in mexico can i justify that as a human being who lives on this planet that is burning i don't think i can so i cancelled my last two tours to australia with some stress from the promoters because i said it's not worth it for zion train to go to australia and burn all that fuel and do all those miles and play them okay to some really nice people at some really nice events but why you know what 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 is there to be gained the people can hear zion train on the internet yeah um i've i don't need to go to australia the only thing that really benefits if i go to australia is my ego my ego cannot be as, as important as the planet mm. so i cancelled the tours so even myself i'm in a an interesting moment as to the future of zion train maybe zion train will only play in europe for now on or maybe we'll do one farewell tour in japan i don't know um but the questions are no longer who wants to hear zion train play the questions are can i justify those actions and some of them i can't i can justify jumping on a train from germany to warsaw to, to come and play in Poland, that's that's different. Um, but I can't really justify um, doing 10 aeroplane flights in a week like I have done in the past. It's no longer... It's Prior no longer correct, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you and I, we've both made lots of choices in our lives. We're both vegetarians. That's a choice that benefits the planets. We both decided to live slightly outside of normal structures of society, their choices that benefits the planet. We're in a new age for those choices. And um, if, if, if organizations like Zion Train are amongst those who lead the way, who will be? You know, I see DJs flying to Buenos Aires from London, and I know their audience is 100 people. What is that? You know, it's it's not okay anymore. And of course, I can't say that's not okay for DJ X and then do it myself. That's that's just hypocritical. Mm -hmm. um, although in in this in this question, we are all hypocrites, every single one of us, because um, none of us is perfect. But the new questions that need to be asked are things like this: Is an event like Rotterdam or IDG? or Boomtown, or Glastonbury, is it okay to do in the future? How much power do we use? How much fuel is used getting there? How many disposable plastic items are used by the public? You know, we all want to enjoy ourselves, but I, I also want my, I'm a grandfather, I would like my granddaughter's children to be able to live, not just live a good life, but live you know so so with these questions you have uh, on your mind with the traveling uh are you also going to switch more to online performances like cara did recently and many artists are doing nowadays well yes and no um i think cara made a fantastic representation for zion train for the release date of our album I'm very proud of her, and I'm very happy she did that. I also think that it is an interesting way of performing for the future, but I think that most of the celebrities and musicians who are online since the virus shutdown started are just attention seekers who are no longer getting attention, and they're desperate to get attention. So. It's a hard question for me. Um, let's see what the future brings. For me, it's one step at a time because this is also my life. This is how I feed my children. Um, and I have real life questions to answer. Um, so far, in the last two years, I have reduced my personal flying by 70%. Um, and I have lots, made lots of other positive life, cho life choices that I think help the situation each day brings new challenges um i don't really like personally 
the performing in a room by myself with a camera. I don't like that. I don't really like cameras pointed at me. Um, I'm not, I do not seek attention. In fact, I would rather nobody ever took a photograph of me ever again. Um, so, but that's, that's my personal character. Uh, I don't know what the future will bring, but I know if we're going to live, we need to make changes. So maybe in general for the music business, smaller events with more local artists um, and more artists who, if they're not local, they can travel to the events on the train or, excuse me, via other uh, low carbon of course, even driving a car from here to Warsaw is um, is more low carbon than getting in an aeroplane. Um, so there are lots of things we can try. Um, I'm not so comfortable personally with the online performance, um, and that's more about my uh, it's more about my character than than online performance in general per se. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Neil, thank you very much, then, for this conversation. It was really nice to have you on the show. It's and always nice to, to be your guest. And enjoy the feedback from the album. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.